welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Um, Here we are uh, continuing our series on the uh, supernatural. um, And I believe that this is now going to be airing Monday, the 18th of September. Um, So Mm -hmm. we're continuing on some great... uh, studies we've been in we've been talking about the hindrances of it the last time we started getting into the specific what we call keys to build upon so that Mm -hmm. we can start to practice you know living this out and he kind of gives us this beautiful truths out of the gospels to be able to understand it last time we talked about the centurion um, who uh, had gone to jesus and said i have observed you as healer, I got a problem with my servant, come and heal him. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And then he says, actually, um, I understand authority. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I follow, I've been watching you and it's what you say matters. And because of your superior power and what you say, that's when this physical stuff happens. Mm-hmm. So eh, you don't even need to come, you know, just, just go ahead and speak the word and it'll happen. You know, and Jesus said, Hey, you've, uh, this uh, this person knows uh, more than almost everybody else in Israel of the truth of that. And so he wants, God, Jesus wants us to know the truth of that, is mm-hmm. that it's what he says. Uh, he's, his authority is from what he speaks, and we got to work toward hearing what he has to say. Um, right, and hearing then, and, and then trusting. And, too, then move, right? and then moving to believing it. Do I believe it? Mm-hmm. And it's a process of hearing and staying with him until he gives us a certainty. And now I know, and I actually, um, I don't need to pray about what I can just pray. May it be so, uh, because mm-hmm. you, because you said, um, so this next story, um, is an interesting one because it tells us something even, uh, deeper in this process. So, uh, this is in, um, uh, Matthew nine, mm-hmm. uh, eight, 18 to 26. So go ahead and read that story and then, sure. uh, we'll uh, pick it up. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing. And he said to them, make room for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all the land. Okay. So, um, two stories in one, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ruler, hey, would you come? My daughter's dead. Could you raise her? Uh, which, by the way, took a lot of uh, faith all by itself. Right. Uh, you know, basically, I, I know you can do this. And so, mm-hmm. you know, is it possible? Yes, I'll mm-hmm. come. Um, so he's on his way. And he, remember, he's in a crowd. And this lady who had an issue uh, that's been medically untreated for 12 years and has a problem. Uh, goes up and and grabs the hem of his garment and is healed. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we learn in other uh, gospels in Luke, for example, that you know Jesus said, you know, who touched me? And you know, Peter says, well, what do you mean? Everybody's touching you. you know? and <laughs> now power has gone out from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then it's a woman, and he says, you know, and then he makes a statement to her, um, your faith has made you well. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, so she believed something that uh, was was about this this hem of his garment stuff, mm-hmm. um, and we know that there's no magic 
per se, but there had to be some spiritual understanding of that because he said to, to you, because you grabbed my hem and the power went out, mm-hmm. um, your faith in that right. all by all by itself is what has has done this. And you came at you came at me with faith. I didn't even have to do anything per se. You took you took mm-hmm. it. In other words, you took it um, and experienced it. He said, "Okay, so uh, well done, you know, daughter." Well, all right. So then, when you read scripture like that, um, some questions should come up. Mm-hmm. Okay, faith means she she knew something and believed something. What she believed is there's something in the hem of his garment mm-hmm. that I need to get to. And it, and she didn't, and it happened. Okay, so as you're abiding in Scripture, you would say, is there anything discussing this at all? This mm-hmm. this hem of his garment stuff uh, that I need What's to... What's that all about? Uh, you yeah. know, uh, okay, well, the answer is uh, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So go to uh, Numbers uh, 15 uh, and read verses 37 through 41. Numbers 15... 37 through 41. Here it says, Again, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. And you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you may not follow the harlotry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined, and that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Yep. So um, uh, he gets instruction, Moses, Mm -hmm. that um, I want my children to wear a garment and this is uh this is a uh as we would understand it um we call it a prayer shawl Mm -hmm. uh the jewish people would put a uh you know kind of a scarf right um behind their neck and over in the front and um that would be a what we and what we call that a prayer shawl or a, a covering and they would put tassels mm-hmm. at the at the end of that on both sides of it right and with the blue thread um and so moses said you know make this scarf and have everybody wear them which by the mm-hmm. way if you go to israel and the orthodox people they everybody still wears them mm-hmm. uh you can you can buy one by the way uh they're beautiful um and they have the uh the tassels uh, right on the end of them, like like, and and there, it's referred to as the hem of his garment. Uh, so, when we think of hem, see, we think of like a man's uh, pants are hemmed. It's mm-hmm. a little the little sewn strip at the bottom. The little stitching at the bottom. <laughs> you know, right? no, it's it's these tassels that mm-hmm. um, have hanging from the gum, hang, garment, hanging, and it's got this blue thread. Um, okay, so um, he says. I want them to wear it, but I want you to, re- I want you to focus on something. Mm-hmm. He says, the seat uh, of this is all the promises, all the truth is valid. Mm. It's, it's absolute and it will be performed. I want you to remember that. And I, what I don't want you to do is go uh, mm-hmm. try to follow your own will but right. but you surrender your will to mine and you'll start mm-hmm. to experience all the beautiful promises because uh, they're starting to learn a uh, covenant, which is um, I've already spoken, you know, to Abraham, but I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing and that um, the promises are, are secured in, in the Bible of what I speak and you can trust it and I'm going mm-hmm. to bless you to make you a blessing, the covenant. Um, so that, but it's an exchange of my will for his will, okay. which means I'm following him 
in the kingdom. I've surrendered my will to his. He's the king and I'm, I'm a servant. I'm not away from him seeking my own will. I'm not forgetting the promises of God. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pursuing the promises of God. Um, and then, you know, what, what does that mean? And it's in the hem of his garment. Um, so he set up the truth of this way back when, when Moses was first uh, getting instruction is their significance is the promises um, I want you to focus on and look at that tassel and remember it's true. And in order to achieve it, grab hold of it, so to speak, is that you have to surrender your will to mine. Okay. Right. Now, um, he tells us more. Uh, so go to Malachi 4, 2 to 3. It says, But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On this day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Yeah. So um, he's telling them about his son, his son Jesus, um, the mm-hmm. Messiah. He said he's going to come with healing in his wings. Okay, now, mm-hmm. this is where, um, unfortunately, um, because we're not reading the Greek or the Hebrew, in this case Hebrew, mm-hmm. we miss out on the, on the imagery or the truth of these words. So it, uh, the way they translated it is wings. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you would say, I guess he's got healing in his arms or, you know, his, his, right, right. you know, what it is and that, but the Hebrew says this, he comes with healing in the hem of his garment. Mm, I love uh, that. Uh, that that's where it is. The healing is in the hem of his garment, mm-hmm. which remember, because people would have understood that term. Right. Back from numbers. Well, that's where the promises are fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I have to exchange my will for his to receive it and grab hold of it. And I will receive healing. And the word healing is physical healing. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's it's spiritual healing. It's emotional healing. It's fulfilling the things that are causing you trouble. I'm going to I'm going to make them whole. I'm going to restore them. Um, mm-hmm. healing in the hem of his garment. It's in the hem of his garment. Okay, go to Psalm 36 and read verses 5 to 12. It says, For um, your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains, and your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we will see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. Yeah. Um. So there's, uh, <laughs> again, this is where the uh, English um, is very weak and we mm-hmm. don't ever get to the essence of the truth of it. Is that again, he says, the fulfillment of, mm-hmm. of my life is in, is in my wings. Um, mm. And again, the word there is hem of his garment. It's there in the hem mm. of his garment. Um, but he, he gives more strength to this. And he says, um, that's where I'm going to get God's loving kindness. Okay. Mm. Um, we think, okay, that means God's going to love me. That's good. Um, God is love. That's good. Well, that's not what the word says. Right. Uh, the, the Hebrew is, and that's the source of the covenant. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. Right. Um, and so I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. I'm going to fulfill the fullness of life and it's going to be light. It's going to be power. It's going to be uh, supernatural. Um, and you can then, when you touch the hem of my garment, you'll experience 
again, he reiterates it, my loving kindness. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a place where my covenant is fulfilled and my covenant, which, you know, as you go deeper in that, one of the benefits of the covenant is healing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to heal you. I want to, I want to fulfill you uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And, and all you got to do is grab hold of my, my uh, hem of my garment, which again, symbolically is surrender your will to mine and, right. and grab hold of the promise, the truth mm -hmm. that I'm trying to express to you. And my power is in my word and it's, it's in the hem of his garment. Okay. So this woman, um, had understood all this, right? That, um, I know about the hem of his garment. Um, I know that healing is there. I know that covenant is there. I just have to grab hold of it, mm -hmm. uh, and surrender my will with the expectation and the understanding that the fulfillment of that will be will be transferred to me because I had a heart to grab hold of it, not mm -hmm. out of a magical thing, but out of a surrendered heart and belief that I believe that what he has to say is true. And when she grabbed hold of his garment, power went out. Mm -hmm. And and even Jesus, in a, I mean, think about this, was a little bit surprised. Right. Be because he said, hey, you touched me. Everybody's, no, I'm not talking about everybody touching me. Power has been appropriated for me. Mm -hmm. um, it happened and it happened. And, he, and then he turns to her and says, it's your faith. You believed mm -hmm. it. You believed it. Your faith draw, drew you to uh, touch it and you're touching it, mm -hmm. received it uh, because you, you, you put two and two together. Um, and mm -hmm. you, and you spent the energy to understand it because she didn't just say, I got to get to Jesus. She said, I got to just go touch the hem of his garment. Right. Right. Why? Well, because that's what the scripture talks about. So, so her understanding of that was, well then, and by the way, Jesus had exact garment. Mm -hmm. He was wearing that exact garment that she knew about that right. was the shawl, had the tassels on the end of it. And mm -hmm. she grabbed those tassels. Um, when we taught our family this, by the way, um, our family received it. Uh, we processed it, have experienced lots of healing. And um, my son, Peter, uh, bought me a uh, tassel. Oh, uh, wow. And um, I have it on my, in my, uh, where I shave. And um, I'm reminded and again, it's not a magical thing. So I don't touch it to get magic. I touch it mm. to grab hold and say, you know, Father, may I continue to walk with you and experience mm. the supernatural as you so, you know, uh, speak it, as you so give it to me. Um, and I'm, ex I'm mm. excited that your covenant is still there and that you have a heart uh, to remind us to grab hold of it and then right. re receive it and grabbing hold of it is basically think of the, of the simplicity as pursuing it, mm -hmm. you know, go after it. Like the woman, she just wasn't going to be stopped. I'm gone. I'm going to get right. there. And uh, she no doubt had to force her way through the crowd to right. be able to do that. That's yeah. right. Um, and so she said, I'm going after it because there's a truth about that. And, and I understand that um, it's my surrender of my will, seeking his mm -hmm. will, hearing what he has to say. Um, believing in the promises that he gives, receiving those promises. And I just got to, in a sense, grab hold of it by grabbing hold of him, hearing what he says, and then expecting to see uh, the, the supernatural work that, it, that he promises. Um, and it's all, it's all laid out for us. So um, what that means for us is, first of all, is exchanging my will for his will. Uh, cause otherwise, otherwise remember he said, none of that matters. Right, uh, so right. it, and that's why it's not a magical thing. You can't just grab it. It's, do you have a heart to surrender? I'm willing to seek your supernatural and what do you have to say and receive your will? And I know the power is in what you say, and I'm, I'm going to be excited 
to hear what you have to say and then, and then experience what you have to say. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll have that supernatural. And my role is to, in a sense, go after it by pursuing, pursuing, pursuing. I got a problem. What do you have to say? I surrender my will to that. I'll follow you into it. And I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. work to, to get to the faith piece of it and, and believe it. Because remember, he said your faith, your belief in all this is really what did it. Um, so it's a beautiful description of the process for us to, you know, where it's mm -hmm. built, you can see it building on itself is, right. do you understand authority? Do you understand what I speak? Are you willing to go after this and surrender your will to receive the promise of the covenant, which is to everybody that has a heart to go, mm -hmm. you know, let's go and don't let that prevent you. Uh, the fear of that prevent you from pursuing the supernatural. In other right. words, uh, if you're equivocating or wondering, God says, well, actually, let's go after it. Come on, go after it. Let's go. Um, if you go after it, you'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised <laughs> at, the, at the beauty of the power. Um, and then, by the way, he finishes the story. Uh, the other part of the story is uh, they're already uh, wailing, mourning, and, uh, you know, sad mm -hmm. with the little girl. And uh, Jesus said, well, she's, she's, she'll be fine. Uh, and they ridiculed him. It mm -hmm. said, it said uh, we doubt it. There's no way that's going to happen. You're saying nonsense. I reject what you say. Um, and so Jesus did what? Well, I got to get you out. crowd outside. I'm, then I'm, I'm out. <laughs> then I'm getting you, getting you out. Um, mm -hmm. If that's your, and that's kind of a demarcation. We talked about that before is... Uh, if there's unbelief in the room and the unbelief is I refuse to believe mm -hmm. you got to get out of the room. Uh, yeah. And so uh, he said, if you have people around you while you're pursuing this mm -hmm. um, and they don't have a heart to proceed at all, get them out of the room. Uh, mm -hmm. Only have, you know, you and your partner, you and your spouse, you and your inner circle, um, have them in the room and the inner circle is defined, including your spouse. Uh, cause remember we talked about a house divided. Mm -hmm. So the unity has to be, I have a heart to, to process this. That's it. So if those have a heart to receive it, believe it. And I'm willing to let God show me, bring them in. Mm -hmm. If, if they don't have a heart to, to be shown and they've decided against it already, get them out. After he got them out, what did he do? Then he performed the miracle. He put hands on her, raised her from the dead. Mm -hmm. um, why? Because belief is in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't allow any unbelief in the room at all. Uh, any unbelief meaning a refusal to be believed. The, the disciples right. and the parents, they were like, I'm not sure about this either, but I'm willing to go. Right, um, right. And uh, that's the heart of what we want. So right. what, he, what he's saying here is um, go after it. Surrender your will to pursue going after it. And if you if you have people around you that are uh, uh, ridiculing you for pursuing it, mm. uh, get them out of the room. Uh, because um, you're going to be caught in pulling you in that same direction where, mm -hmm. yeah, I probably, I doubt as well. I don't think this will ever happen either. And, and he, <laughs> interesting enough, he says, I got to get you out of the room. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so, uh, don't be in that spot. And, and that's why we talk about, and we talk about it, we talk about it. Your people around you are critical to this process. Right. Uh, now it doesn't mean, and think about the disciples, they knew nothing. So it right. wasn't, it wasn't how, how mature they were, how grand they thought about and this. you're not looking at perfect people. You're looking at people willing to go, willing to surrender, willing to see. Just, right? let's just go. Um, let's go together. And as they did, see the disciples uh, grew and grew and grew together. Uh, even when one of them, like a Peter or, or a James or a John might even have more faith. By the way, uh, at this moment, they're, they're the only three disciples in the room. Uh, mm -hmm. so the other ones probably were a little bit skeptical as well. Um, and right. Jesus said, well, you three come on in because you do believe this and, and I need faith, right. faith here with me, you know, to, to let this happen. So, uh, gather people 
around you that are going to encourage even at the very beginning, which is what the disciples had to do, is, hey, let's stay together. None of us know anything about this. And mm-hmm. we don't know. And we're probably highly skeptical. But let's go. Um, and, right. and so have people around you that have a heart to go. As you have, have, a, have a heart to go, then go after it. And really go after it. And, and grab, grab the hem of his garment and let him do these supernatural things. Because he says... Um, there's an exchange of your will to my will, and I'm going to deliver a covenant, which is going to be supernatural stuff. So. <laughs> That's so good. So, so good. I love that. You know, I, that is one of the best examples, I think, of where, you know, when you um, blow that out of the wings versus the hems of the garment, that fills the story out so much for us to understand truly the power of what she knew and believed and was going after. Right. I love that. That's right. Yeah. Well, Father, we thank you for uh, the truth that uh, you have healing in your wings, healing in your hem. Uh, and it's really just us believing and trusting by surrendering our will and receiving the promises of the covenant. And the covenant is to bless us, to heal us, to give us supernatural things that only you can do. And you just say, let's go. Uh, come after it. Uh, get uh, doubt and, and skepticism out of the room and uh, walk with me so that I can fulfill it. And uh, may we have a heart to go and experience it more and more and more, which will encourage us to invite people more and more. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, so much, Rich. And thank you for joining us today. Um, If you have questions from this, be sure to send them in at questions at afjministry.com. And we would love to talk about them and we'll see you next time. Yep. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.